This right. meeting is being recorded. Mm. So we have different types of observation studies. Um, and experimental studies. Now I want to show you. I'd like you guys to read this, read through this for our next class. We'll talk some more about observational studies and experimental studies. Um, we'll come back to this. I just want you to read it because I don't think it's going to matter so much unless you, you read it and think about it and watch those videos. Um, the four videos, units 15 to 18 that I linked in um, the platform, Moodle platform. Okay, so, so you guys as consumers of information in social media, in, in um, off the internet, you can, you can observe, you can read articles, you can read research, but you'll notice that research can conflict. So one day you'll read about um, eggs are good for you. And next day, a week later, you read eggs are bad for you. What are you supposed to do with this problem? Does anybody know? Read more about it or maybe like uh, look for some other studies about it. Yeah. And yeah. It and it also has to do something, if we talk about social media, it has to do something with the the logarithm, like something like that. Algorithm, uh-huh, the algorithm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's something that's been developed a long time ago called meta-analysis. Meta-analysis is an analysis of analyses. It takes together all those projects and puts them combined it combines all the results into one report, okay? It's a scientific method. Meta-analysis is a scientific method that combines many research projects to be able to say, or publications, to be able to say, eggs are good for you, <laughs> all right? After all said and done, or eggs do not spike your cholesterol or whatever it is that your outcome is of interest. So meta-analysis and systematic, okay, so systematic review is a literature review that's conducted that collects all relevant papers or articles. And then the meta-analysis is a scientific method of combining all the statistics. Can that apply to the cigarette exper uh, situation that was on the video that at the end they, they grouped together all the different research that was done on the effect of cigarettes on lung cancer? Yes, yes. I mean, I, I never read the meta-analysis, but yes, a meta-analysis is what you do. I think it was pretty easy in the cigarette case because they weren't conflicting results. <laughs> they were all the same. But in, in cigarette research and the effects of tobacco, it was the case that even though an experiment, what we would consider the a good data collection of an experiment on human beings, it was prohibitively impossible to do it. But yet they were able to say that smoking causes lung cancer, even though an experiment was not done. So this is the, so anyway, that's kind of, I'll go back to that in a moment. Let me finish here and I'll go back. Cause I want to, I want to, you, you're, you're emphasizing a point I want to make. Um, so, so first a systematic review is done to collect all the relevant papers. And then the meta-analysis statistical techniques are used to combine all those results into the conclusion, all right? So if you wanna know about any topic, look for systematic reviews, look for meta-analysis, and that will be the best type of research to answer your, your, your question on um, research that, you know, conflicting research, let's say. Okay, so back to the idea of what is the link? So I've described what's different between observational data and experimental data, on observational studies and experimental research. How are they linked? So Angel kind of 
talked about it already. So you begin with observation. The observation leads to questions. And with the questions, you could you try and design an experiment where you can test your hypotheses. And that's done in a specific way, which I, again, recommend you watch the video to see that. Um, it's done in a specific way. And once you do an experiment, you can actually say, if you find a statistically significant effect of using, um, what was the example that I gave? Oh, so a treatment for a weight loss. So to be able to say this treatment causes you to lose weight, you'd have to conduct an experiment. You can't just observe, you can't just observe um, that people say they took this drug and they've lost weight. Okay, you can't just observe. Why can't I just observe it? I already gave you the answer, but why can't I just observe it? What is the what is the effect of conducting experiment? How is it conducted? What are the what are the what's the procedure of experimental design that makes it so just observing it's not going to give me the answer? Well, it's a control process. Okay, there's three, there's three things. Process. There's a control that you have to you have to have a control group. You have to have randomization. In other words, the people that land in the control group and the people that land in the treatment group, as a group, they should be similar. You should have just as many healthy people in the control as you do have in the treatment group. You should have just as many unhealthy people in the control as a treatment group. You have to have a representation of people who might take this drug that, you know, they all should be moderately overweight. So you, you would screen them, but the, you do not pick where the, whether they go in the treatment or the control group. That is random. And that way you avoid a bias. Otherwise, what could happen? Let's say you can just pick which group you want to go in. What's the problem with that? Well, if I don't want to lose weight, I will choose the placebo group because okay. I'm not concerned about losing weight. <laughs> okay, well, everybody, let's say everybody in the everybody as who's a volunteer, they want to lose weight. So they have to say they want to lose weight. But okay. what what might happen is that it's a good point though you're making. Um, what might happen is the people who are going into the treatment group might be the more scared people, the, the ones with worse, you know, much more desperate to lose weight, um, more scared about not losing weight. Okay. And most people will, uh, it's going to be hard to find people who want, who are both willing to lose weight, but go into the placebo group. But you're going to, let's say we don't, let's say, let's say it's not that we, um, we randomize mostly, but let's say one, one of the nurses, she's feeling very badly for some participants who are crying and say they really need to lose weight. And what if she puts them into the, the treatment group? You have to avoid all that happening. So what's done is the staff is, does not know which pills they're administering. All the all the the pills mm -hmm. are all bottled or or packaged by a third party. The clinic that's conducting the research experiment doesn't get to see which patients are getting what. It's blind. And also the patient doesn't know what they're getting. So it's double blind. So this is how you conduct research and test for the cause effect relationship with an experiment as opposed to just observation you can't just observe what are people are doing and in fact it's repeatedly shown you know i had a really big problem with the covid research uh, done for the covid vaccine because in that case um they uh the they they had 
they had a few months, like two months where they followed the participants of taking the vaccine and they did some follow-up after they gave them the vaccine, but then they told them which one they had and there was no chance to see long-term follow-up. We never have long-term follow-up of the vaccine trials. They never done uh, research or, or experiments with the boosters. The, the The research on the COVID vaccine is atrocious. It's anybody who does research is just is not impressed, okay, with that, with the quality of research. Don't repeat that kind of research. To do quality research, it means that you have to set up an experimental, experimental conditions. Observation is not enough. There was um, a period where doctors in the past, like in the 90s, were using um, hormones uh, for women who were complaining of, about menopausal symptoms. And doctors were prescribing to patients who are asking for, um, you know, supplements of estrogen because they had low estrogen. So women, I'm talking about women, um, low estrogen, and they would help supplement and they re resolve many of their menopausal symptoms. And then someone thought, wait a second, we can't just be giving hormones. We need to test this. We need to do an experiment. We can't just, you know, there needs to be a experiment and then protocol once the outcomes are available. And what did the research show when they actually conducted experiments within a few years um, where they had control group and experimental group that or treatment group, they found that on average, women taking estrogen did not do well. They were at risk for um, breast cancer. They were at risk for you know, different kinds of um, and not not bone problems because estrogen helped people's bones, but it, it led to breast cancer and then uh, I think ovarian as well. So the the one saving grace is you know if that is the reason why they were developing uh, cancerous cells, then they just had to stop the treatment, right? But they have to be so the protocol became that if anyone was on hormones, they had to test them for um, you know test their blood, looking for any kinds of abnormal cells. And they'd have to do that every at least six months, but maybe some people get their blood tested every three months. So the observational studies weren't enough. What was the problem? The problem was just going by the fact that women were asking their doctors for estrogen supplements and getting them and doing well. Well, again, that's a selection bias. Maybe those patients that were asking were more aware, they were more educated, they had more money because they were ready to pay um, because, you know, anyway, I don't, I don't know that plans were covering estrogen supplementation at that time. So uh, those were people who otherwise had very low, uh, or they had protection against illness because they had otherwise really um, good lifestyle, right? A healthy lifestyle. In the case of, um, so that's a self-selection problem. In the case that I gave about losing weight, what would be the outcome you think of people selecting themselves into the treatment group if that happens? So if sicker people are going in the treatment group, what's the problem with that in terms of the outcomes of the study? That they may have some other conditions that may not go according to the study because maybe they don't, uh, lose weight not because of the treatment or the, the the pills that they're taking but because of the other conditions they other have confounding factors right so if your treatment group is filled with the same unhealthy people that's going to affect your outcomes of your of your study there can be confounding factors all right so you guys get the idea we've got to do an experiment to be able to attribute a, a causal effect Although that's not dismissing the value of observational study because everything begins with an observation, okay? Um, I have to take just a quick break. I'll be right back. Just a quick break. Okay.
All right, I'm back. Okay, so read about those different kinds of studies. I've also mentioned here, uh, okay, so mixed methods. Mixed methods is a method of research that includes both um, qualitative and quantitative research. So you could do, for instance, um, grounded theory research to figure out how you're going to gather data, the right kinds of questions you need to ask to gather information on uh, subjects. So once you have that, then you can do the quantitative methods, all right? So that, that can be called mixed methods research. I've allowed you also, so quantitative or qualitative research, and I've also allowed you to do what's a literature review. A literature review as a paper takes a research question and then searches databases through Google Scholar, something like Google Scholar. There's other ways to, but Google Scholar has really improved in the years. Um, so that's, that's your best start to begin with Google Scholar. And you scan and obtain all the literature on a topic and then begin to sort the literature and since your paper is just a literature review, you're expected to explain why you included certain research or literature and excluded other research. So you have to go, you have to, first of all, spend some time developing a search strategy. So like we did last week, where you come up with keywords and you search them and you refine your search strategy, and then you with that search strategy, you collect all the papers you can, and you go one through one, one you go through them, go through their um, abstracts, read a little bit of their intro, read their methods and their conclusions, you skim through them and decide if you're going to keep them or not and begin to group them. We're going to talk about that today because literature review is required in any, any um, research publication that you conduct. But doing a paper as a literature review is something else, okay? It's, it's, it's just much more systematic and you would have to explain, like I said, why you're including some papers and excluding others. You have to be very clear about your um, approach. All right, so today, I have just some all pointers, pointers here. Okay, the goal is, so, um, okay, our goal, I'm gonna just look at this first. So this is the, so you've, I don't know, you've done a, a research paper before, but, this is what I'm going to expect from you as assembling your paper. You're going to have to do, uh, write an introduction. Now let's say you're researching, um, give me a topic, <laughs> give me a topic. So let's see, let's see where you guys are at. I wanna hear, Jan, have you, have you narrowed okay. a research topic or Taylor, you have something? Well, I, I'm going to give you my topic research. Okay. A international trade potential catalysis for growth and development that can stagnate migration massive in the Caribbean region. I took a case of Puerto Rico. Can you write it in the, can you write it in the chat? Okay. Okay.
We're waiting for Taylor. Yeah. Do you get it? Yes, international trade, potential catalyst for growth and development that can stagnate migration massive in the Caribbean region, case of Puerto Rico. <clears throat> so, okay, I need to understand what is your saying that. You're saying international trade can be a catalyst for growth and development, but you mean, but not that, right? But can stagnate migration in the Caribbean region? Okay. Is that what you mean? But? Uh, uh, I, I, uh, I You're think to say it, it's a good thing, mean... catalyst for growth and development, but stagnating migration is a bad thing. Yeah, okay. Stagnant migration and the massive, I don't know where that word goes. Massive. Uh, massive migration. So mass migration. Because. But can stagnate we, mass migration ma in the Caribbean. So <clears throat> I'm going to fix it for you. Okay, thank you. Well, I mean, I'm trying. If I'm wrong, you can tell me. Potential cows for growth. It's okay. Development. Okay. And we can, we can work. So this is your research question. But you, you, you think mass migration is a good thing or a bad thing? M my, mass migration... I, I I I want I I want to show all all Puerto Rican people all Puerto Rican people leave Puerto Rico uh, to migrate in U.S. That's that's I want to 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 talk about my to write or talk about my my trip because immigration mass migration is major challenge to many part of the world. Particularly in the Caribbean region, where this time has become challenging. Okay, wait. I think the yeah. I, I, I think the the oh, okay. You can so you can talk about the Puerto Rico people that are migrating out. Yes, because this migration can result from various factors such as the lack of economic. Opportunity, political instability, or precarious living condition. Puerto Rico has now a U.S. theory located in the Caribbean region, has also faced high levels of migration of its population to the mainland United States in search of a better life. But my starting question aims to explore the potential impact of international trade on the growth and development of Puerto Rico while taking into account its role in reducing and reducing mass migration. Okay. All right. All right. So um all right. So he needs to talk about this question in the introduction and conduct a literature review. He has Two topics, I mean, there's many problems here to look at. Growth, okay, international trade affecting growth and development. Interested what that means in the case of Puerto Rico. 
lots of questions I have for this. <laughs> um, and then the mass, then migration. So growth, development, migration in a in uh in Puerto Rico. But it looks like you want to talk about the Caribbean as a whole, but the case of Puerto Rico in particular. So have you started to look for literature on that? And no, but it's a it's a how can I say that it's a it's a proposition, but I can I can avoid I can avoid the Puerto Rico's case, but I don't know. That's why I want to talk uh, to you about my yeah. topic research yeah. before. Yeah. We can we can look at that. We can look at that. So to do this, he's going to have to make an introduction. And when you write the introduction, you have to stay on the topic. Obviously, this can comprise a 500 page book, you know, all the related topics in here. But you want to focus on the Puerto Rico case. You want to focus, you want to focus as much as and refine your question as much as possible that you can provide an introduction in like three pages maximum. And I'm talking mm. about pages that uh, are, it could be single spaced, three pages. Then your literature review will help to provide the background in terms of the scholarship on this topic. And you're going to spend that time um, looking at what's done before, but really try and narrow like there's so much research out there and you you know you can't do that many pages either you're gonna do four or five pages I actually have it broken down lower at the end of these notes how many pages for each but you you're gonna have to be able to answer the question of what you're talking about here okay then you're going to get into the methodology and the, the methodology might also have some lit review in it because you have to talk about what other people have done before. If you're developing a model like a regression model and you want to use certain variables, there may have been models um, derived before you your project and you might want to use those so that literature review would go here or particular methods that are used, you would put them here. So you explain how you're going to um, answer your research questions. You're gonna also talk about any data and how you collect the data here. So that is really important, all right? Data, getting your, your data to do any kind of inferential research. Um, after you've conducted your models or done your descriptive and inferential statistics or done your uh, qualitative research analysis, then you summarize your findings and your results. You just summarize the findings. You don't say too much about the why, okay? Why, uh, why you found what you found, what does it mean? This is the discussion section where you interpret the findings and you can speculate on the implications of your results. Here, you're going to again, have a literature review. So you notice there's lit review throughout your paper. It's not just one section. So you have to, you could collect all your literature review and then decide where you're gonna put it, okay? Um, so lit review is very important. You might just repeat what you did right in the literature review and methodology and you discuss it in your, in your, um, discussion section, but maybe expanding a little bit more and adding other literature to it. And then finally, you state a conclusion in a different way. You say the same thing, summarizing your, summarizing your findings your future research and talking about um, contributions of your research. Generalize, you know, how you generalize your results, who can use your results, 
so this is your your attempt to conclude so when you read someone's research you're going to read um well i didn't write the abstract here but you're going to read the abstract which you'll see in the in google scholar you you will read the introduction maybe skim the literature have a look at the methodology because in the methodology what will you see there that's important you're going to see the data source where did they get their data who did they interview how did they interview them or where did they find the data online that's really interesting. And that's what you're gonna look at the first time you read a paper, okay? You're gonna look at that. Um, you're going to also, you wanna see the results, but probably if you're just skimming the paper at the beginning, you're just gonna read the conclusion. So that's a first pass. That's how you, anyway, that's my recommendation just to get through a paper. If you're a very good reader and a very fast reader, you read the whole thing. But usually we are all busy, and we just need to skim to see if we're going to include this paper in our research. Oh, I put the abstract at the begin at the end. How funny. Mm -hmm. The abstract is at the beginning. I don't know why I put it there. What happened? But OK, it's there. I'll probably move it to the top. I don't know why it's there, honestly. So I will I will move it and update these notes. I'm going to put it at the top. All right, so what I want to do today is I'm going to leave you guys with this. You should read, read, read. There's all these tips on how to look at research. It's all here for me to remember uh, what I have to say to you. But I'm not. I'm going to talk about it as we go. So um, back to Google Scholar for now. Okay. Okay. I want to hear Gene's topic. Oh, did Gene just leave? <laughs> oh, I don't see him. He's here. I just don't see him. Sorry, I was getting water. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Just when I called you, what's your topic? Or do you have a kind of a topic? Well, I was thinking about financial education, but um. Uh, for teens having a better understanding of uh, or knowing the basic of, of of finance before college. Okay, so what 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 is your research question? Because that has been looked into, but what would be your research question? Uh, well, I think that my research question could be is there if if there's a positive uh, pattern like maybe I can say it uh, if the person um, let's say having 18 years before or before college knows more about how to handle his financials or his finance uh, different with another person that doesn't understand uh, finance. Okay, so is there a positive relationship between finance education in high school and finance outcomes um that's what you want to ask you want to see if a person getting finance education in high school improves their their income and savings in the future yeah you you say it better <laughs> it's okay it, it's because english is my first language well, actually it's my second language but um it's okay you can speak spanish it's okay um, I'm going to suggest off the bat, just because we have so few weeks, that if you really want to pursue that, that probably the best thing to do would be a literature review 
And in that way, you can just explore how this was studied by other people and what 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 things they looked at, how they tracked, um, you know, different kinds of research that was done to assess this question. I would I would suggest that because it's not it's a short time to be actually able to um, do any analysis or find data. I know somebody who might have data on that, but and I asked them because we have in the in the um, in the undergraduate school in the finance department they have a program called Student Money Solutions, and that is where the students from the um, the finance program go to high schools and they teach finance in high schools. And I've been asking for years that I want to do some research. I want to go, I want to go there and do some research with the students, but they, they, they're not interested. So um, I'm not sure they're, that's not their, their goal is to just bring, you know, finance to the classroom and they're not interested in research. So it's going to be hard to actually do your own research or collect data, I'm going to suggest. But in the, in your research, looking for literature on this very interesting topic, um, you might find data sources. You might be surprised. Maybe maybe somebody is collecting data on that that you can you can access. So, um, so I can study or do a research of what what you're saying, right? Is that I can make my research uh, literal review about other studies that have been about the topic. You can just do a literature review of other papers on the topic. Yes. That's what I'm suggesting. I mean, you don't have to do that, but I'm just suggesting that might be the way to go. Um, just hold on because, uh, all right. No, I'm trying to find my, one second. For a moment, I don't know why it's so hard for me to find. I why not? All right. Okay, I found it. All right, so this is an example. I'm going to share this with you. Okay, so this is an example of literature review that I had working with a professor, another professor, um, I created this literature review for him, uh, working with my my payaf, my teaching assistant. And what we did, the topic was um, looking at 
the question of why the CAFTA countries, so Central America, why is there an F, CAFTA? Ca I can't remember what it stands for now. Central America free trade countries. So there's an agreement that there are no tariffs between certain countries in Central America. And um, the question is why over the last, it's almost since 2005, so it's almost 20 years, years, that they have not ever gone beyond creating um, t-shirts and simple cotton uh, clothes. Why haven't they improved in the value of their product? And so we're looking at what was called the value chain, the value chain of production in, in clothing. And the database that the professor was using was uh, the, I think it's the United Nations um, trade database. And there using certain codes, you can get total value of trade between countries. So it's an excellent data source for trade of, of goods, international trade of goods. So um, these are uh, doing a literature review. Um, I can't remember my keywords at the moment, but usually I, I, I ask to keep a record of the keywords so I can repeat them. So we found all these papers on the topic and I created these columns. Uh, this is like who was going to do the research the reading of these papers because you have to read all these papers, the ones that you pick. Um, so we downloaded the paper, we filled this page and author, title, year, and country of publication. Um, and what they looked at, so these were predictors or factors that influence quality innovation and moving movement up the value chain. So these were the factors they looked at turnover, employment and exports, gender, labor force and power. Can you guys read? Is it too small? So every paper looked at something different and this was excellent for the literature review that I write in the end and I say um, how many papers talked about um, unemployment or employment issues. Like look at them, a lot of them have em employment as a major factor. Um, and so this is a way that you can sort your data later, but you just put it into a big Excel spreadsheet. Keep track of the type of, of, of article that it is, if it's a journal or a book review, the methodology that they use. So this one was a literature review. This one was a survey using Institute Statistical Data and Literature Review. This one, I don't know, Literature Review about Global Factory. So I asked her to mention, I think this is an old file, but anyway, this is the methodology section. Then it had, she had to mention uh, what empirical analysis was done, the years of the study, that where the data was from. So this was really important because if we want to replicate this or do something similar, it's really important to know the source of the data. I don't know why this is all whited out, but... Um, and then to just put here, what was the analysis? Like a summary, a summary of what they found and then any comments. So in this way, when you read a paper and like how many are here, there must be, oops, sorry, like 60 papers, okay? 54, how are you gonna remember all that? Right, you're not gonna remember all that. Now it used to be, um, that you could you could collect the papers and put them in a reference manager. There's a reference manager um, called Mendeley that's free. And um, I'm gonna show you Mendeley. There's actually the, the library often offers, um, it offers workshop on how to use Mendeley if you're interested. And there, it just, um,
this is uh, so you you make a free account and you download the software and in the software that's where you you can download articles to the software and it creates uh, a database of all the articles that you're interested in. So that's very useful if you're going to pursue a topic for four, five, six years, or if that's going to be your main <clears throat> area of research to have all the articles in one place. And this is very popular before databases became um, easily accessible online. Um, but you can start your own library. It's basically you're creating your own Google Scholar with articles inside. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend time on that, but I recommend that you look for the workshop and you try and take the, the Mendeley workshop. You can ask at the library if they offer any, or um, I think that they usually offer them to staff, but as a graduate student, you should ask the library <clears throat> in Osuna if they're gonna be offering workshops and when they offer and you can join and they'll teach you how to use it. If I'm sorry, Professor. Can you repeat the name again, please? It's right here. It's right here. Mendeley. Mendeley. Thank you. I'm showing you the website so you can try it yourself. <clears throat> you can. It's free. You can. Uh, you can download the software. See, download, and get started. Let me see if I can show you mine. It's working. Oh, it wants me to log in. Hmm. I haven't done this in a while. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'm not going to bother. Give me a second. Almost there. I had to reset my password. Okay, one more time. All right, so this is my Mendeley. This is it here. And it just shows all the articles in my library. I, I have my own articles in my library. It's what I have. Um, and then I think I have Okay, so this is a literature review. This is a set of articles that I have for a paper. I think this was for the same paper I showed you the text. Um, Asian drivers, no, this is different. Anyway, so this is like a literature review. These are a bunch of articles. I put them all in here. And by putting them in there, um, I can get the abstracts out. Well, no, sometimes it, it holds the abstracts, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway. I don't think this is necessary for this course for you to do this, but maybe for your thesis, you might want to use something like Mendeley, you know, for your fourth, uh, whatever, third or fourth year in the program. Yeah, this one. 
because um, it's going to waste your time and we all have very little time. And it's not a bad, it's not a bad use of time. It's just, you don't need this right now, but this is Mendeley. This is what it looks like. And see, if I click there, I can see the abstract right away. Now this was useful when things like Google Scholar didn't exist, but Google Scholar in the last 10 years has improved so much that um, I don't have to have my own library. So what this does is you can download articles right to Mendeley and it it does all of this for you. It puts in everything into, um, into Mendeley so that you can easily review the topics or the papers. You can sort by year, you can do all kinds of things with your paper. So it's just your own library. It's your own Google Scholar. Um, you can make different topics. Um, so like different papers. Um, I can share these at some point. I think I shared these with other people. And um, and that's that. Okay, so that's Mendeley, Reference Manager. There are other me reference managers, but this one is free. So something you might be interested in. So let me put you back to my thing. So what I'm doing here is just showing you uh, the method that I use to avoid wasting time. If I think an article is something I'm going to use for my research, I begin by filling up a row in Excel of what I read, because after I've read three articles, I'm already confused where I saw what, okay? So it helps me organize myself. So let's see, how do we get articles? Let's go back to Google Scholar and talk about getting articles. So we talked about this last week. And um, if I wanna look at the topic of high school finance or finance education in high school impact. There's some words I can use. Impact of personal finance education delivered in high school and college courses. So here's an article and you notice, you notice that I can pick up the article here. Okay, so this is bolding. It tells me it's available. Now, not all articles are available. This one is available. So if I go like this, it opens for me and uh, I get some information. I read the abstract. I look at the keywords to get an idea. So financial literacy is a key, good keyword. Does this Im impact household savings? Personal finance is another keyword. So start collecting keywords for yourself. And I would recommend that in this, in the spreadsheet that I explained to you, that you put a column, a column. So I want you to do this for next week. This is what I'm getting at, okay? So for next week, you're gonna do this. You're gonna make your Excel file. You're gonna submit it to me so I can have a look, a little closer look at it. And you can keep track of the keywords you use to find the article. So you can make a column. So what I can do is I can send you, I don't know, you can make your own because this is, you know, you can make your own spreadsheet. But if you want, I can send you these headings. Do you guys want that? I can send you these headings. But yes. Yeah, yes. yes, it's interesting. So yes, yours thank will, you. Yours will be different possibly, but that's the idea. Yes, please. Factors. Okay, so I can send that to you. I put it on the, I'm going to put it on uh, the uh, the platform, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so the keywords I use to get this article going back, oh, I got to go all the way back. What did I say? I said uh, finance, no, I said finance education, no, I said high school, no, I said finance education, high school impact, right? Uh, keywords, uh, yes. That's what I said. So in you, high school impact, yes. Yeah. So just keep those, just you know, and then consider adding new ones. Compare, like, so you're building. You're, you're not. 
we have to cope with the fact that we are not robots, right? We're not going to remember everything precisely. So we have to develop these, work with our tools. So humans are very good at developing tools. So let's say I, I'm going to make that keyword and the tool. So I'm going to read this. This study investigates the impact of personal finance education delivered. Oh, I'm going to go back to the page. Sorry. Back to the article. This study investigates the impact of personal finance education delivered in high school and college. Outcomes of interest were investment knowledge and household savings rates measured years after. Look at that. So obviously you can't do this study. <laughs> you can't do this study for this course, right? Because they, they followed people for years after the financial education was delivered. But we could we could certainly do this on a long-term basis. Like if you started now, Jen, you could... By three years, you could analyze this data if you wanted to do this for your thesis, let's say, right? Um, uh, <clears throat> outcomes of interest were investment knowledge and household savings rates measured years after the financial education was delivered. A web-based survey with questions about participation in financial education, financial experience, income and inheritances, and demographic characteristics was administered to 1,039 alumni from a large Midwest, Midwestern university. Participation in a college level personal finance course was associated with higher levels of investment knowledge. Experience with financial instruments appeared to explain more of the variance. So, um, so financial instruments, so that would be financial instruments would mean like bonds and stocks and, and um, GICs like financial instruments appears to explain more of the variance in both investment knowledge and savings rates. No significant relationship between taking a high school course and investment knowledge was found. So it didn't influence investment, but it did help with savings. Okay. No, so it's saying experience with instruments in fact impacted investment knowledge and savings rates, but the high school taking high school course did not impact investment knowledge. Okay. So anyway, this is interesting. How did they do this? So you're gonna find out, you're gonna go through this and look. So look at all the research they have in the introduction. They have a bunch of literature here. You can find the articles going back. If I click here, it'll go down to the, the the reference, notice how few references they have, not a lot. It's not a lot of references. So you wanna be, you, you don't wanna make a huge bibliography. You wanna pick the most relevant references possible. But this is not a literature review, this is a paper. This is a, this is in Journal of Family Economics Issues. We can, we can also put a column here. We can add a column for quality of the journal. I can put journal quality. And again, I don't think that lower quality journals mean a bad paper necessarily. It's just, it, it could be a good paper in a lower quality journal. There's different motivations for picking journals, all right? Some, some academics just need a publication once every three years. So they might've just tried to get that publication quickly and they put it in a lower quality journal because the process is quicker. So you, you don't know that uh, a good a good article could be hidden in a lower quality journal. So you want to read for introduction, I said, so look, the introduction is one page. The literature review is perfect. So if you were to do a literature review, you would start here and look at what they had for literature review and you would collect all these papers to further read. So there's one, two, two pages of literature review. So this is a very thin article. Mm, what I'm interested in is the data that they got, how they got that. Modeling financial, so where do they explain the data? Literature review, modeling financial knowledge and savings analysis. Our models each contain the following four categories. Financial education, so they go right into the model. I don't know, where's the data? Okay, study design. So here's the study design. 46 questions, web-based survey. Survey was similar to that of, so they copied the survey by Burnham and Al. 
and they measured past financial experience, current financial experience, income savings, demographic characteristics. So this was a self-report study. So people were just telling them about past experience and current financial experience. I guess they had to tell them if they took um, high school um, finance courses. So this is not even a longitudinal study. This is not a study where they met a bunch of high school students, they knew what they learned in high school, and then followed them into the future. They didn't do that. They just surveyed people and said, did you take a, a college or high school uh, finance class? And then they asked them, how much do you have in savings? How much do you have investments? Are you aware of investments? So that's what they did. So in here, you would put the title, sorry, back into our spreadsheet. You gather that information just quickly, not to waste time. And you would put the, the author here, keywords, the journal quality, the, the title of the journal, sorry, the title of the article. I'm going to put the journal name. It's not even in here. I'm surprised I don't have that. Journals. I think I didn't bother because we just use top quality journals. So this is the journal name the journal quality, the title of the article, and then let me open this. Okay, then you would say the year, the country, and uh, the predictors, what did they predict? What were they looking at? And remember, it was savings and investment knowledge. There were some factors they they um, were looking for or outcomes. Those are outcomes more than factors. So that would be outcomes. I have to put all these columns in because we were looking for the same sort of thing. So you can put predictors and outcomes that they were looking in, looking for and then type, and then the methodology they use. What methodology did they use? Was it empirical analysis? What was the year of the study? What was the data source? Then you, you say, you conclude it. You can just cut and paste what they found and any recommendations, like any comments or thoughts on the article. And from there, you're gonna extract all that information from the article and then then what should you do? Should you put the article away? No, you should go into the literature review and go to the references and see what other people did. So you have more articles to look at, all right? So never waste an article. You have all this prior research to look at as well if you're interested in that topic. Okay. So since this course is, I mean, since most of you are in the international business program, I would like you to, to focus on international business topics. Although it is interesting, the question that is has been posed here is interesting. Maybe we can spin this more into international business, I'm not sure. Um, we can think about it can do that but for the project next week i want you to specify a research question and begin your search i want to see um of course you want to read the results i just kind of skipped over that notice here they have the results these are the descriptive statistics you have the the sample can you guys see it sideways sorry but i don't know how to flip that um they have the average investment. So these are just descriptive statistics for all of the variables. And then they did some sort of regressions here. These are regressions that they did trying to predict their 
These are the variables they use for independent variables to predict investment knowledge. So investment knowledge was what they looked at here, investment knowledge. Okay, so these regressions are here and the results. And we should probably talk about regression soon, but anyway, at the point, this point, I'm really interested in you finding, developing a research question. So, spend a little time deciding if that's relevant to your research project and then go look for more literature. I'm gonna go back. So that was in 2007. Maybe you want something more recent. The impact of high school financial education evidence from a large scale evaluation in Brazil in the American Economic Review, probably. So this is a good article because it's a good journal. American Economic Journal, Applied Economics, interesting. From 2016, it's more recent. And do the same thing here, where you're reading the abstract, short-term financial behaviors, however, show mixed results with significant improvements in student savings and budgeting as a positive. We study the impact of a comprehensive high school financial education program spanning six states, 892 schools and approximately. So this is a long-term study. They have a huge database and this is government data, right? This is, this is using government data. So unless you have access to that, you're not gonna be able to do that in this course, but it gives you an idea of what's possible in Brazil and the outcomes are still relevant to you. Whether the question is answered positively that, you know, financial education in high school leads to better savings and, and budgeting outcomes in this case. Increasing students use of expensive credit cards to make consumer purse. Okay. So in the positive side, they have it, they lead to improvements in savings and budgeting, but also increase a student's use of expensive credit cards. So yeah, they're less, uh, they're more inclined to use credit cards, which can lead to problems. So all those issues are brought up. Once you have one article, listed in your spreadsheet it's easy to add you know the next one um so um but i really want you to try and put international trade or international business in your research topic so if you don't have a topic in mind already actually you know what you're going to do for me is each of you, I want you to email me your research question. Email me your research question so I know what you're looking at and, um, and I can get more involved with that. But for next week, I'm going to put this, well, at least the headings. I'll improve the headings because this was a very specific um, table that I made, but I'll, I'll improve it and I'll put it blank into the Moodle platform so you guys can get started. I want to say something about Google Scholar and not finding articles. If you can't find articles in Google Scholar and you think you really want it, you can put in a request to Bibliotecas, um, La Biblioteca and through the online service, you can see this, right? So you can go to, where is it? This looks weird. Everything looks weird. Uh, looks like they changed things here. I'm going to go to... Okay, so this is the Administración de Empresas Biblioteca. It also looks different. Uh... Everything looks weird. What is going on? 
What I'm looking for is where you can ask them to help you find an article. So you can you can search here. This is Bibliotecas. Um, let's go back to the other one because it's a bigger Biblioteca. I don't know if the Sistema de Bibliotecas is the one that you're looking for. Oh, it's for. back. It's back. It's back. It, it was just loading weird. It's it's here. Sistema. It's just this this image is not loading properly. So the website is biblioteca dash rrp um i might have written it different anyway it looks different but it will lead you here so you guys can write that down that's the upr library and you should be able to get remote access you just have to set up um so if i try and find something here if i do high school no i said finance education, high school impact. It's loading. So it brings me here and it shows me an article. Everything looks different, but okay. So let's say I wanna get this article. This looks like a book. I don't want to get the book. Base de datos, they change things. So I'm going to the base de datos. Wow, did they ever change stuff? Okay, so these are different databases. Uh, they they used to be, are you watching? These databases used to be linked. I don't know if they unlinked them. This happened last year, but okay. If I put this in here, what's gonna happen? Uh, finance, education. High school impact. Oh. No, it's not going to work. This is not good. So they did something. I don't know what they did. That's why I'm in Google Scholar, guys. <clears throat> they, they, Base de Datos is still here. It's weird. General search. Let's try that. Okay. So I'm back to, so what I did going back, uh, I wrote finance education, high school impact, and that brought me to, uh, something else EBSCO host but I want to do a general search because it just gave me a few articles here or a few things books it's giving me books electronic document okay um if I go to general search am I going to get something different or the same everything looks different I apologize I don't know what they're trying to improve but they're trying to improve always finance education high school impact. Now all the databases should be linked for me to do this. High school. Let's see if I get anything different. It looks the same. Bibliographies, nonfiction. Bibliography, online nonfiction. Okay, so if I go here, Electronic document, access options, online access. Okay, if I go to online access, it brings me here. This is what I want to show you. So to, have you ever done this before? Has anyone done this before? No one? Okay. Yes. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to get this page because it won't give it to you unless you are a student or a professor. And it tells you here, um, escriba su identificación, primer apellido, and your contraseña is the last four digits of your student number, and it should let you in, okay? So you should get into this page and get your document. If it's available. So here it is, and I can get it, okay? So you need both Google Scholar and the UPR system to get articles, because they're not all gonna be in Google Scholar. I, for me, it's not an excuse if you cannot find an article and you exclude it from your study if it's a main article. You need to find it. You need to get it. You, that's part of your research is tracking down articles. You can download the whole book here. You can download a chapter in PDF, apparently. Um, you can read it online. This is quite good. This is ProQuest eBook Central. 
So those are the options you see download section by section. That's pretty good. Um, all right, the other thing I wanna show you before we go is if you can't find something, you can ask them to get it for you. Now I have to figure out where they put that. Hello, researcher. All right, there's something that's, it's Intercambio Bibliotecaria. You can borrow from other libraries and they will do the work. The, the librarian will do the work for you to find the article. I don't know where it went. It used to be here, very easy to find, but there's a link. So I'm gonna tell you, if you can't find an article and you think you should get it, go to the library or there should be somewhere here you can do it, but I don't see. Oh, habla con nosotros. Oh, there we go. Okay, so did you see where I got that? Habla con nosotros. Habla con nosotros, and you can go here. You can ask questions. Uh, I don't know. Okay, here, wait. Represent institutional. Prestamos, here it is. They totally changed the site, but anyway, it has the same content, but moved around. So préstamos, solicita un préstamo interbibliotecario aquí. They will get books from you from New York if you want it. They will get books from you or articles or manuals from other universities in Puerto Rico. They can work with the United States and Puerto Rico to get books and articles for you. So if you want something, you can find it. Okay, they can find it for you. Sometimes they may charge you some money, but it, it's not gonna be too much. Like five cents a page for copying or something like that. It's not, it's not a lot, maybe even less. All right, so next week you have to, okay, you have to email me your research question and you need to get started. If I approve it, we're gonna narrow it down by email. If you want to meet with me, we can meet, but you need to create this document for next week. And you're going to show everybody your document. You're going to show everyone what you've done over the week. Okay. And you're going to impress the others and they're going to be inspired by your work. Okay. And that's it, that's for next week. Just data, I want at least, at least 10 articles. Minimum 10 articles. Minimum, okay. huh? Thank you. Minimum 10, it doesn't have to be 60. No, not for now. 10. Okay. And to make the time worth it, let's get your research question clear um so you don't waste time so everybody that's so that's your project for this for tonight email me or tomorrow email me your research question you're going to download this watch those videos the four videos that i linked on the okay. moodle page and um and that's it we'll start working on the Google search, on the search. Okay, right. thank you. Okay, so have a good night. Any questions for me? Um, yes, uh, I have a question. Professor, I just, uh, I'm sorry. Go it's ahead. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you. Go ahead, uh, Maria. Thank you. Uh, do you have to confirm that the topic that we choose before we do the research? I, I think I should confirm it, then I can't have complaints. <laughs> I won't okay. complain. <laughs> Otherwise, I could complain and say you can't do that, and then you're stuck. So yes, let me confirm. Confirm with me your topic. Okay, thank you. Okay, Professor, I have a question which you already like kind of addressed, but I just want to make sure. Uh, my question was if we have for this specific course, if we have to do the research on something related to international commerce, because that's what our PhD is about. Or if we can select any other topic, I just want to make sure. Uh, 
I would like it to be an international right. commerce just so you can get okay. You can get started. We don't waste time. You know, you're already developing your topics. But if you have your heart set on something to do, you can convince me. Okay. But uh let's try <laughs> let's try and focus on international business. Um we can be creative. Because I was I was wondering if you have like I don't know, like a sample of subjects on international commerce that you think deserve analysis or that you recommend or I mean, honestly I, I haven't selected my topic yet because I'm I'm kind of I can confused. say I, I really like I really like travel. I really think travel is very interesting. And I had one student last year working with the topic of um what is it called? Uh I can't think of the word now. But like sustainable tourism, sustainable tourism and the idea of people traveling and and rather than affecting and changing the environment that they're trying to, they're spending money to go see to actually immerse themselves. So studying how people, uh, how companies are even in Puerto Rico, how Puerto Rico um, how Puerto Rico companies encourage sustainable tourism or if they do or if they don't or if they're ready to like and I and I asked him to start doing surveys and things but he did it he did a nice project but he anyway it was it was a good topic I think it's a really good topic so for me international because you want to do something that's international but related to Puerto Rico right so that's a topic I like mm -hmm. um and then um what other topics do people have? We talked about that. You know, people are talking about development topics. Um, I really like that. Also, the topic of of uh, of um, what's called ESG right now, ESG environment, social governance, and how that's impacting. Well, in finance, it's a big deal. I don't know if you're interested in hell in finance. Yes, you're from finance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have so many interesting ideas for, for projects and finance. We should probably just meet on hell and I can show you my different ideas and see. Yeah, we like like I mean maybe some bullets on topics that yeah, I have a bullet be... sheet. I, I wasn't um I can send you guys my bulleted um topics. One is ESG, um, the other one is sustainable tourism, and I have some some background you know, videos and things you can watch for that topic. And uh, what's the other topic I like? I, I like um, I like the topic of crypto education, more specifically than just finance education, like crypto education, uh, like cryptocurrency and education and how, how you teach that. I don't know how to integrate that so much because in finance, you know, they take certain topics in finance and finance education, I swear it hasn't changed in 20 years because I've been doing it and it hasn't changed, but it seems like it needs to change. But how do you, mm -hmm. how do you adapt education to um, trends? That's a really interesting topic for me. How, how do you adapt education? So, so if you think of different disciplines that have to work with trends um, and how do they teach how do they teach for the trends? If it's a constantly evolving field, can there really be education in it? So I don't know. I, I find that a really interesting area. Like if, I always thought about computer science. I never studied computer science, but it always troubled me. Like if you study computer science, your your degree is basically obsolete in four years, right? Isn't it? Like how, how do they how do they build a computer science program? at university that's going to be relevant when you're graduating because everything changes so fast. So I don't, they must, they must've figured mm -hmm. it out. I don't know. I'm not from computer science, but they must've figured it out. So in that way, finance should be able to do the same thing to integrate uh, financial innovation into the programs. But first, second, third year, I don't, there's not much, there's nowhere to put it. I've, I've never, I've never seen like there, maybe there's one or two courses in, in current trends or topics in finance. And that doesn't seem like 
good preparation. And now with cryptocurrency out there, people are just learning off the fly and burning money. I think, I think that's what's happening. And the vultures are taking advantage of them. So, so I think that's an interesting okay. you know, education mm -hmm. of, of not just crypto, but crypto as an example of how, how you how you conduct education in, in a constantly changing a technological world. How, how do you devise education to do that? What what what's what kind of framework is there for even doing that? What are the minimum requirements, sufficient requirements for a course or a program to do that? Um, so that's like education, international business. Other international business things. Um, let me see. I'm going to see my Perfect. list. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what about digital money? Well, digital money is like uh, crypto. crypto. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. I was looking for it uh, for other topics. So uh, I'm going to keep searching. I'm going to send you my question later on. Okay, I'm going to see my list that I had used last year. I sent it. I think those were my main things that I liked. Anybody else have ideas of interest? Like I imagine, you know, you guys, I don't want to force you to take a topic. Um, that's why I'm leaving it open because people might have their own ideas. But... But if you want me, I have tons of ideas. In terms of ESG, um, I could even get data. I've gotten data from, from Bloomberg for that, to look at that. They have like indices that they Bloomberg's created and you can, you can look at it in different ways. Now I'm not gonna find it. I'm not finding what I want. Somebody's in the chat. Let's see the chat. Yes, tell me your topic idea. If anybody wants to go, you can go. We can talk about topics, you can stay. But if you need to go, you guys can go. Okay, quality tourism experience. Key factor to tourism to re relocate to the Caribbean. The example of Puerto Rico. Uh, you mean to tourists or to relocate? Those are two different things. Or you're saying for a tourist to move to Puerto Rico. Key factor. Bye, Ariadna. Key factor to tourists to relocate the example for So, okay, tell me more. Yeah, the um, All right, it was called sustainable community based tourism. That was the, and that was motivated by a documentary I saw that was called, um, okay, I'll find the name of the documentary. There's a lot of documentaries on it because they make for beautiful documentaries. No, those are not it. God, there's so many documentaries now that I'm looking. Jeez. I'll have to I have to go back and see tourism. <clears throat>
Yeah, those were my topics. ESG and international competitiveness, sustainability in agriculture, tourism, and international competitiveness. That's what I focused on. So those are my topics. I just threw international competitiveness behind everything. So one, one is ESG, and I'm putting it in the chat, ESG and international competitiveness. What about medical tourism? Okay, sustainability in agriculture, tourism, and international competitiveness. Medical tourism is another another one. <clears throat> Something I was looking into before the hurricane, and then I just stopped because it wasn't going to work. It was a bad time. And then blockchain and crypto. Oh, yeah, blockchain, not just crypto, but blockchain. That's really underneath uh, the digital currency is blockchain and crypto and international business education. So those are the three main areas. I threw medical tourism in there. Um, if any of those stick with you, you have to build a research question around it. So then you can start your search. But send me the research question to get started. So I can see if it's good. I mean, ecotourism is something there. It's very interesting when you start looking into the topic, there's different kinds of sustainable travel. But the idea of, of people coming to see an area and not converting it back to where they came from, like, what is the point of that? You want to go somewhere and, and know the people and the place. You don't want to change it to me to be the place you left. And that seems to be what's happening. The documentary makes it look really bad. The Last Tourist, that's it. This is the documentary. You can find it, I'm not sure, I think in Amazon Prime. Very uh, moving documentary. Um, if you want to just find topics that are popular and you're not sure, why don't you just go to Google Scholar? If you go to Google Scholar and you, you don't know where to begin and you just want to look for a popular topic in international business, just do that. International business and see what people are talking about. So this is uh, international business. So these are just the topics here. Semi-globalization and international business. What is that? I don't know, let's look it up, you see. Environment and operations, strategy management and new realities. Start reading, start reading. What are the topics? If you guys are gonna do an international business degree, modern global economy. I have a real problem with international trade. Um, I, have, I have an issue with unregulated markets and, and borderless countries or border, borderless, borderless for labor. I have, I have an issue with it. And um, it derives from the fact that you're not just cogs in a wheel. You, people are attached to where they come from. And just to uproot them and just expect them to be able to move anywhere is, is a, a travesty. I really think it's a travesty. But um, that would be something I'd be interested in, is labor labor and international trade, uh, mobility, 
labor mobility and international trade. Right now I'm doing, I'm doing a project on, like I told you about the CPA exam and international candidates. And no one studied that, the um, outcomes of international candidates, but it's interesting because the international candidates, why would they want to write the US CPA exam? Because they want to work for multinationals, they want to move to the US. You know, there's many different reasons. And also having the US CPA exam, Angel, you have the CPA? Yeah. CPA? So it's a tough exam and it's a recognized exam around the world. And it is something to put on your resume. And even though, you know, the Japanese students can't speak English, they can complete the CPA exam because they learn exactly how to, to solve it. How they know what the terms mean in the context. They learn how to, how to prepare for that exam. But then they, they do poorly. The international candidates do poorly. So you have to say why. And looking into research about that, that could be interesting, Angel, if that interests you. To, to look at the research of why CPA candidates internationally, what are, what are the issues surrounding their poor performance? They can't be stupider. I mean, I, I can't believe people from India are stupider. You know, it's not that, it's not just that, it's something else. And now that now it's interesting because the, the CPA exam, it used to be that um, only when, okay, since 2011, the CPA exam could be written outside of the United States. Before that, if, if somebody from India wanted to write the U US CPA exam, they have to travel to the States to do it or mm -hmm. any of the territories. Um, you can write it in Guam. They can write it in Alaska. If from India, they might just go to Guam. I think it's probably closer and they go write it there. I'm still far, but <laughs> it's closer. But since 2011, they can write in different countries. And India was, you were able to write in India from 2000. And uh, I think uh, 15 or something. Anyway, so now, you, well, it used to be from 2011 to 2022, only certain countries could write in centers, uh, test centers in other countries. They couldn't write in their own country. You had to go to specific countries. And it was restricted. You were restricted by your your. Uh, residency by your citizenship well they opened it up now it's completely open if you're in india you can write sorry if you are in japan you can write in japan yes but before somebody from um where somebody somewhere near china can they can't write in china they have to go to japan but japan never used to allow anybody to come there now japan can allow anybody anybody can go to japan to write it. So I don't know. I don't know the impact of that. There's a lot of things to consider. I don't know if they thought of the impact. And I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it's an interesting research question of what are, what is the impact of opening up the CF, uh, the CPA exam without borders? No no barriers. I mean, you still have- You mean, the, the, US, you mean the, the US CPA exam, you mean, right? The US CPA exam. That's all I'm talking about. That the US CPA exam yeah. is popular around the world because of the- People who want to put it on the resume, they want to get a multinational job, they want to get a job in a multinational firm, and they want to say they have the US CPA exam. Mm -hmm. So my the I'm sure that different have countries have different requirements in terms of education and, and I don't know, but and working for experience. The US for CPA exam, all the requirements are the same, depending on so everybody writing the US CPA exam has to indicate which jurisdiction of the states they want the license. So there are 50, 53 states they can license in and they got to pick. So somebody from India, they have to pick. That's another question. Where do they pick? Where do the international candidates go? So that, that's what the research is about. Anyway, maybe it interests you, Angel, to look at that. And um, we, we're writing, we're finishing a paper on that topic right now about the international candidates, where they write, how they perform, and we, we're limited in the answers that we can provide because we're just using some, some data. Oh, I wanted to show you something else. I'll show the other group later too. If you want data, if you want data, like I really want you guys to focus looking for how you're gonna, you know, the research question and what's gonna be your data source. And you're gonna get that from looking at where other people are finding their data source and what kind of 
research questions they're answering with what kind of data. If you want information or you want to create a database for yourself, you can use like a historical database for yourself. You can use the Wayback Machine. Does anybody know what the Wayback Machine is? No. No one? Mm -mm. The Wayback Machine, I've heard about it. I always heard about it, but it's very interesting. It's very slow, but uh, let me show you the way. If you guys want, unless you guys got to go, <laughs> I can show you next class because then everybody can see it. Um. I'm gonna stop the recording right now so we can just talk about your topics. I'll show you the next the Wayback's machine next time.